Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. A question that I read a lot in the comments of my YouTube videos is what kind of tool I'm using to show that network overlay in the lower right and what the meaning of the numbers is and the values that you can see there. Well, I'm not using any additional software here. This is a feature that Dicerlay added to Battlefield 4 in the community test environment. Right now it is only available there, but in the fall patch for Battlefield 4 it should also be included, so soon everyone will be able to use it. Now, how can we enable it? Well, one way is that in-game we open the console. And when we then start to type net, then we see that the command is not going to work, because the symbol of the key we use to open the console is always added to the command we start to type. So the first thing we need to do is use backspace to delete that symbol. Then we start to type network perf overlay dot draw graph and then we need to add a 1 and press enter to enable the network performance overlay in the lower right. Ok, now before I'm going to explain all these values to you, let us use the HUD customization options Dicerlay added to the Battlefield 4 CTE to increase the visibility a bit. These options should all be included in the fall patch, so soon you can also benefit from that change from the CTE. Now, this looks very nice. So what do we have here? The first value we see is the high frequency update and as you can see the game is using 30, which means 30 Hz. When we go to the options, gameplay and advanced options, then we see a high frequency network updates feature here. We have two different values, auto and on. When we set it to on, then this means that we force the game to always run at 30 Hz. This means that the game will receive 30 updates from the server per second. If we set it to auto, then we tell the game that it should find the best rate on its own, so it can use 10, 15, 20 or 30 Hz. Which rate the game is using depends on your internet connection. If you have a good line, then you will not have any problem to run at 30 Hz. If your connection is not that good if you have low speeds, then the game can reduce these rates in order to prevent problems for you. What is important here is that this only affects how frequently you receive data from the server, and obviously more updates per second are better than less. It does not affect how frequently you are sending data to the server. This was always at 30 Hz and cannot be changed on the client. The next item is the latency, which is measured in milliseconds just like the ping. But why is the latency in the network performance overlay higher than the ping in the scoreboard or in the server browser? Well, there is a very easy explanation for this. The ping in the scoreboard works exactly the same as if we would open the command line and then ping google.com. Just imagine that we ping a game server. What happens now is that my PC sends an ICMP echo request to that server. And the server responds to that request. So it takes 18 milliseconds between my PC sending the echo request and receiving the answer from the server. This means that the ping is the round trip time. Now, the latency you see in the network performance overlay is the round trip time from the client to the server and then back again. It is measured by tracking when the packet acknowledgement for send packets is received. The difference between latency and ping is that the ping has an immediate response from the server, where the packet received indicator for the latency may be buffered for a frame, so multiple acknowledgements are batched. This means that the time may increase as a result of server degradation. The latency value that gets then displayed is the average over a number of samples. So if you want to know how big the delay between you and the server is, the latency is the better number to look at than the ping you see in the scoreboard. The next two values are packet loss inbound and packet loss outbound. These two are percentage values. This means that if you see an example 5 for packet loss inbound, then this means that 5% of all data that is sent from the server to the client does not reach your client. And if data gets lost on the way to your client or from the client to the server, then this is obviously very bad. And the last one is the move queue. It is the number of packets that have been sent to the server but have not yet been acknowledged by the server as received. The lower the number, the better. 
According to Dysele, problems start to occur if this number is greater than 32. So with the console, you can always open the network performance overlay when you are playing Battlefield 4. But what if you want to enable it permanently, so that you don't have to type in that command every time? Well, that's an easy solution. The first step is to find out the installation directory of Battlefield 4. You can do that by going to Origin into the application settings and then look under Advanced. Once you know where Battlefield 4 has been installed to, you open the Windows Explorer and open that folder. And in this folder you now create a new user.cfg file. Here you can now add any command that is also working in the console. And when the game starts, it will execute all the commands of this file. So if you want to have the game to always show you the frames per second counter, then all you have to do is add this command to this user cfg file, and you have never to type it again inside the console in-game. The network performance overlay should be included in the PC version of the fall patch for Battlefield 4. It is a really great tool to find out if you have some sort of problem with the internet connection between you and the server. So this is obviously very good news for PC players, but how about players on consoles? In my opinion there is absolutely no reason why this feature should be limited to the PC. Especially because I do read from console players more frequently that they do have some sort of uh, problem with hit registration, rubber banding, etc. than I do read from PC players. What I also read a few weeks ago was that Dysalay is discussing to bring that feature to the console. Simply by adding a new option in the menu where the player can enable it or disable it. Sadly I don't know if it is really going to be included in the fall patch for the consoles. However, as soon as I find out, I will let you know on Twitter, Google+, and Facebook. And that's it for today. I'm currently working on a very detailed video about the HUD customization options which Dysele added to Battlefield 4 in the CTE, and which will also be included in the fall patch for Battlefield 4. It is quite a lot of work, but I hope to have it finished during the next week. So, if you like my content, please consider to hit the subscribe button and I might see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.